Number 45, Integrated Concepts. A large rocket has a mass of 2 times 10 to the 6 kilograms at takeoff, and its engines produce a thrust of 3.5 times 10 to the 7 newtons. Letter A, find its initial acceleration if it takes off vertically. All right, so let's just work with that first. Free body diagram, y, x and y axes. The point in the middle here will represent uh, the rocket ship. There are two forces acting on the rocket ship, right? If we're talking about vertical uh, forces, we have to realize that there is um, a thrust being produced, and that is propelling the rocket upward. So we have a force pointing up. That's the thrust, that's the force of thrust, and that is 3.50 times 10 to the 7 newtons. Great. Now, there is also a vertical force of gravity, right? So the weight of this rocket, okay? Now, the weight of the rocket is equal to the mass of that rocket, which was 2 times 10 to the 6, multiplied by 9, I'll do it underneath just to save a little horizontal space, times 9.80 right, because that's the gravitational acceleration. So what do we get here? 2 times 10 to the 6 times 9.8. So we get a value of that the weight is equal to 1.96 times 10 raised, is that the 7th? 3, yes, 7. And again, that's in newtons, all right? I'm just leaving out the units. And let me just fix that because I cut off the 7. Okay, now these are the forces. That's it. So all we now need to do, we can use these forces to help us figure out the acceleration, right? We already can see that the force upward is greater than the force downward, so there should be a net acceleration up. So we should expect our answer to be positive, right? So let's detail it. So the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y. So the sum of the forces, so we have a positive because it's pointing up, 3.50 times 10 to the seventh, minus then, because it's pointing down, 1.96 times 10 to the 7th, and that should equal the mass of the rocket, which is 2.00 times 10 to the 6th, multiplied by the acceleration. So easy to solve this, right? Just divide out the 2.00 times 10 to the 6th, right from both sides. Divide out the 2.00 times times 10 to the 6th. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Times 10 to the 6th. Okay, so my acceleration here will be 3.5 times 10 to the 7th minus 1.96 times 10 to the 7th, and that will be divided by 2 times 10 to the 6th. So we get a value 7.7. .7. So 7.7 .7 and probably 3 sig figs, so that's 0 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration. All right, great. So that takes care of letter A. Let's take a look at uh, letter B. So how long does it take to reach a velocity of 120 kilometers per hour? if assuming constant mass and thrust. So first thing is I hate that the units are in kilometers per hour. So I'm just going to convert them into meters per second right away because that's my acceleration value. All right, so we'll do that down here. So 120 kilometers per one hour. Get rid of the kilometers. They go on the bottom, meters on the top. There's a thousand meters in one kilometer. Great, so they're gone. I want to get rid of hours. Now, since they start in the denominator, I need to put them in the numerator. And I know the relationship between hours and minutes, namely that there are 60 minutes in one hour. Okay, so that would mean the hours cancel. And now I got to get rid of minutes. So I got to do the same thing, minutes in the numerator and seconds in the denominator. There's 60 seconds in a minute. Great, so I did that. Okay, so now take 120 times 1,000. 120 times 1,000 and then divide it by essentially 3,600. So it's 33.3, so 33.3 .3 meters per second. That is the final velocity, right? And that's, so now what we have to do, that's the final velocity, right? The initial velocity, it's starting from rest, so that's zero. Okay, let me just make that a little neater, that's zero. Um, they're asking us for the time, right? It says, how long does it take, right? So we're looking for the time, okay? So the T is unknown here. And we do know, though, the acceleration. So what we gotta do is we gotta think, What's the kinematic formula that relates these three things, right? It's simple. It's this one. Final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. So the final velocity, we calculated it to be 33.3 after our conversion. The initial was zero. The acceleration is 7.70 .7 meters per second. And the time now is going to be in found in seconds. So simply divide out this side by 7.70 .7 and this side also by 7.70. .7 so time will be... 33.3 .3 divided by 7.7. .7. 
So we get a value of 4.33, right? So we get 4.33 seconds. Okay, that is the uh, time that it takes to reach the final uh, velocity here of, what was it? Hi. One <laughs> of, you want to do physics? No, I, uh, he, he, he defends, he defends. Okay, buddy. Hold on one second. I'm almost done with the problem. So, all right, so th that's the time. That's how long it would take, right? And then letter C, it just says, really quick, guys, uh, it just says what would happen if the... Uh, Right, how the mass would it, the mass would decrease and whatnot uh, because the fuel is consumed. So obviously less mass, same amount of thrust. It, we would uh, actually have a higher acceleration. Also, the higher you get, the lower the gravitational force is. So therefore, the acceleration should also increase. But anyway, I think you guys know that. So got to run. Hopefully, you subscribe. Thank you so very much, and I'll see you in the next video.